Hello, welcome to KringleCon. My name is Chris Davis and I work for Counterhack Challenges. I'm going to be demonstrating Active Directory penetration testing using Kerber Roasting, Bloodhound, and PowerShell. Okay, so before we start, what I'm going to be demonstrating is how to manipulate Active Directory in a number of different techniques and methods to go from a limited user escalating all the way up to the highest user privileges possible, typically domain admins. The reason why, uh, why I wanted to do a demonstration on this is because very often what you'll see is you'll have individual talks talking about one particular thing. For example, Herb Roasting only, what it is conceptually, or how to use Bloodhound, or how to use PowerView. But a lot of times they don't connect the full dots of here's how you go from start to finish. And so that's what I'm going to be demonstrating here. However, there are some really great talks, and I'll link to those to here in a moment. But again, the, this demonstration is really just to kind of connect all the dots, show you how to use all these tools and methods, and also a little bit of uh, endpoint protection evasion. So as I go through the demonstration, try to keep in mind that it might seem somewhat contrived and arbitrary, and that's just because we're on a limited time, and it's also pretty difficult to emulate a live network perfectly. However, you will likely find some of these tools and techniques helpful during your penetration testing, and you might also even find it useful at KringleCon and FrostFest. So a lot of the resources that I either talk about or actively use during this demonstration can be found using any of these links. Um, I don't go into a lot about what these actually are or what the underlying technology is, only because I think that would be outside of the scope of this demonstration. However, I do provide some links to a lot of these resources. For example, Tim Medine's talk there at the very top on curb roasting, which is absolutely excellent. He covers it in complete detail, way better than I ever could. I would highly recommend you checking out that talk and some of these other links. In addition to that, at a certain point, I will use some custom code snippets that I created to evade endpoint protection. Uh, these can be found at that bottom link at the very bottom of this page here. Okay, now let's jump over to our demonstration. Okay, so we're going to begin our demo here. And in this demo, I'm going to be essentially demonstrating what an assumed breach assessment would look like. This is where a company hires you to, and they give you limited access to their environment. They used to give you a laptop or like some kind of remote access uh, with a limited domain user account. And your job is to essentially try to escalate permissions as high as you can possibly go on the domain, typically trying to get domain admin. And so that's what we're gonna demonstrate here using the uh, Bloodhound framework, but also curb roasting the network, uh, ca uh, cracking some service account hashes, using those hashes to pivot to another account, and then finally leveraging and exploiting uh, some improper permissions on some group objects, which will allow us to get the domain admin. So I have, uh, I am sitting here with the domain volns.local. I already have some scripts set up here to begin with. We're gonna go ahead and run Bloodhound Collector. It's, in this case, it's a PowerShell script called Sharphound. Now, very oftentimes this script won't work because you're gonna have very solid endpoint protection that's going to prevent this from running. Um, in this case, I'm just trying to do a demo. In the case that you do run into a situation where you have strong endpoint protection though, you can use something like a, a Sharphound, the C Sharp project. You would have to download Visual Studio Community, then then download the original C Sharp source code for Sharphound, and then recompile it. Uh, usually you have to tweak some things in order to make it to where AV doesn't pick up on it, but that's typically what I, I do on a lot of assessments. So in this case, I'm going to import this module here. Port attack module sharpound. Run once. Okay, so that's imported. Now, as long as this machine is domain join, I should be able to just do invoke bloodhound collection method all. We'll see what happens. Should run. It might take a moment or two, so we'll let this run and get back to you in a second. Okay, so now that that is complete, uh, we should have a zip file here that the Bloodhound ran for the collector. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy this over to our Kali instance that has the Bloodhound front end in, uh, interface set up. So we'll go over to that now. Okay, so on here we have Bloodhound set up and uh, I have already imported the database. And in here, we can actually see the database info, info. It's populated with users, computers, groups for our domain. In this case, uh, we have uh, the domain users object showing up here, and we can actually see that there are 207 domain users. And the interface is pretty easy to use. Uh, that's one of the, the beautiful things about Bloodhound is 
it's it takes all this huge amounts of data and then visualizes it for you in such a way that it's easy to pivot through data. So in this case, what we are curious in is the shortest path to domain admins. And, and what's beautiful about this is it already has pre-built queries. There's very few times where I've ever need to break outside of these pre-built queries because they pretty much get me everywhere I need to get. Uh, so in this case, we'll click on the pre-built queries. We'll go find shortest path to domain admins. And here we have our domain admins. And then we have everything that springs off of it that if we had access to one of these things, there, it is potentially possible for us to gain domain app. Okay, so here we have the remote employee user and it has right DACL permissions on the AD group object domain admins. And if we right click that, we can actually click on help and it'll have the abuse info section here. And this is essentially a step-by-step -step how to abuse it to where you can gain access to do domain admins. In this case, if we had the PowerView project, we could uh, leverage that to give ourselves or add ourselves to the domain admins group using the steps found here. In this demonstration, we are actually not going to use this, but you certainly could use PowerView. Again, you would just need to click on the abuse info section. But we do know that we need to get access to remote employee now. Next, what we want to do is we want to see if we can find a list of Kerberosable accounts. So if we click on of Voln's service, so if we click on this account, what we find here is some useful information. So there's a little bit of a description here. It says used by the IT admins to run scripts, can run scripts in the IT share. Okay, so let's see if we can Kerberos this account, get its account hash and then crack that hash. All right, so, so to do that, let's jump back over to our Windows 10 box. We need to find out what our server is or what our domain controller is. So now what we want to do is actually, let's just take a look at that. Let's uh, look at the shares available on it. Oh, there's an IT share. That's interesting. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to use the uh, get user SPNs as part of the impact software that can be found on GitHub. Now, a lot of times you're not going to have a machine that has Python installed on here. You can use the Py installer su uh, suites to compile this Python script and then run it as an executable on the Windows machine. Uh, you can also use this from any host essentially that has network access. So there's been times where I had access to a Linux host and I was able to run this as well. Um, there is also a invoke Kerberos PowerShell script that you can use this with. And I believe there's also the Rubius project, which will allow you to compile your own binary and essentially run the same thing. In this case, again, for the demo, I'm just going to go ahead and run this script uh, as if I had Python on the system. So here we have my limited user account with my limited user password. I'm going to go ahead and run this against the domain controller. And uh, we are going to... I don't know if that's the correct DC IP. I think it is. It's going to take you just a moment to run. And when it's done, we should have our, uh, our hash. All right. So let's take this hash and we're going to go ahead and load that up into Hashcat. Okay. So I've copied this over. We have our file here called spns.txt. Um, again, we just have our one service account hash in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run our hashcat command to, all right, so we got hashcat running. Uh, we are going to be using the best 64 rule set on this. And then we're using just a simple file called rocky.txt. It's actually a really small password list. It's, it's commonly used in CTFs. In this case, again, I'm just doing a demonstration to crack the hash. And what do we know? We have a cracked hash. So it is the password for the, the Volms underscore SVC account is Simpsons zero. Okay, so uh, back over to our Windows machine here. We actually saw earlier that we have the IT share available on the Windows domain controller. And according to what we found in Bloodhound, the that account had access to the IT share found in the description for the account. So let's go ahead and uh, run a command prompt as that user. So we're going to go ahead and run as no profile, Voln service. We need to put in the correct password that we got.
Okay, so using our new command prompt running as the Volns service account, we should be able to uh, net view that file share on the domain controller. And we do see that there. Um, and then we can use a UNC file pass to actually list the contents of that folder. So if we do that and IT share, yep, we in fact are able to list the contents of that directory remotely. So let's go ahead and copy that file off there. It looks kind of juicy. It says get proc info. Let's see what's on that. You can also just cat it if we need to, but uh, let's see if we can copy it over here. All right. So now that we got the file copied off using the account hash that we cracked, All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's in this file here that was found on the IT share. Ah, oh, what do you know? Some IT person was uh, generous enough to leave their credentials in a file here. Um, oh, that's interesting. So we it's actually the account that we saw earlier. So let's actually see if we can pull that up here. But now we pretty much have the credentials for this account. Let's see if we can pull this guy up in Bloodhound. And then let's uh, go ahead and mark this as mark user as owned. Now that we have this user marked as owned, we can actually do a new query. We can do show uh, shortest path from owned principles. And what do you know? We have a direct path to domain admins as, I, as we had saw earlier. So it looks like the remote employee account has the right DACL permissions to the domain admins AD group. Now what this means is you have the ability to change the DACL permissions of the AD group object domain admins, which means you can actually set the permissions such that you can add yourself into the group. And then once you're in the group, you're a domain admin, right? Again, we can use that. We can actually accomplish that using the power view suite in this case again i'm actually going to show you another way because a lot of times what happens is if the power view suite is is going to be picked up by every endpoint protection and, and so what we want to do is come up with our own script or a modified version of power view that won't be picked up but there's actually just regular powershell script blocks that one could use to accomplish the same things essentially and that's what we're going to show here in just a moment so let's go back over to the other machine uh, since we're very close to getting domain admin Okay, so we have our credentials here that we found on an IT share from popping that uh, account using Kerberosting. So we should actually be able to verify that information. So we can use PowerView or we can use Bloodhound to see that there was the, the, the right DACL permissions by the remote employee user. We should be able to verify that without those frameworks though, because a lot again, a lot of times those will be blocked by endpoint protections. Uh, so in this instance, I have a little short code snippet that you can see here. So let me go ahead and expand the screen. Oh, whoops, I forgot to uncomment them. Uh, so this is one short code snippet we can use. And we, in this, uh, once we run this, it should query and we should see our remote employee user has that right DACL permission set. Uh, oh, there it is right there. So we can actually see that the uh, right DACL permission was given or is granted to the remote employee. So it means we can add ourselves, give ourselves generic all permissions and then add ourselves to the group. Here's another short clip we can use to do essentially the same thing um, to query the domain admins group and get the right access permissions. Uh, again, it gives us this, essentially the same results. Okay, so what we want to do in this situation is to, uh, here's another script that we can use. Again, we can use the PowerView framework to do exactly what I'm doing now, but in this instance, uh, maybe let's say that endpoint protection was giving us some heartache, so. And so essentially what we're using is LDAP to connect to the domain controller. We're setting our user account, Christy. Uh, Christy will have generic all, which should be set here. Yep, so we have the generic all permission. Once we have generic all, we should have access over the entire a domain admins group. And then we can simply add ourselves to the domain admins group. Okay, so to accomplish this here, we need to run as uh, the remote employee user. So we should be able to run the same run as command earlier as we did earlier. All right, so I'm gonna run as, go ahead and close this. And we're gonna go ahead and give it the password. 
Oh, whoops. There we go. All right, so now we are running in PowerShell. All right, we're running in Command Prompt, rather, but we need to be in PowerShell. All right, so let's go ahead and run that script that we had here before. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so if that's finished correctly, we should see our account, Christy, has been added. So we can run that query that we ran that other time to get the permissions on the object, see if that changed. All right, let's take a look. Oh, there it is. Okay, so our Christy account has now been given generic all access using this little code snippet that we came up with. All right, so now that we've been given generic all access, we need to add ourselves to the group. Now, unfortunately, um, we can't just run the uh, a lot of the standard commands like net add, you know, users and uh, add a user to AD group using PowerShell because a lot of those will get access denied. So we're gonna have to actually use a PowerShell code block in order to do that. We could also use the PowerView uh, framework um, so in this case, we're going to do the same thing again. We have another script block here that we're going to use in this case. And so again, uh, we uh, set the domain admins user. And I have my account here with my password. And this script block should add us to the domain admins account here. So let's take a look here. All right, so again, using the, the PowerShell prompt that we had run as the remote underscore employee user, we should be able to just paste all that in. And now if that works correctly, we should be in the domain admin script. All right, and so if that worked properly, then what we should be able to do is uh, check that group. So net group, domain admins, domain, and voila, there's our user account, Christy, uh, who is now in the domain admins group. So let's go ahead and use our credentials to uh, go ahead and remote into the Windows domain controller. And we're in. Okay, so again, just to confirm that. Okay, so that's it. I hope you found that demonstration useful and will help you in your future Active Directory penetration testing endeavors and or at KringleCon slash FrostFest this year. So you should definitely go check those out. Uh, my name is Chris Davis. Thank you so much. And again, if you need those resources, some of those code snippets that I use during this demonstration, you can go back to the front of the video there during the resources page.